So you've got yourself an idea for a cellular connected IoT device. Sure, join the club. Have I mentioned my IOF, Internet of Fondue, idea yet? Okay, never mind. Getting your next brilliant IoT product out into the world isn't just about the design itself. It's also about making sure it's properly certified, secure in every which way possible, and includes a robust remote management system. And then we can talk about worldwide deployment. <laughs> Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. In this episode of Chalk Talk, Mark Grierson from Digi, Rob Reynolds from SparkFun Electronics, and I explore how Digi and SparkFun Electronics are working together to make cellular connected IoT design easier than ever before. We investigate the benefits that the Digi Remote Manager brings to IoT design, the details of the SparkFun Digi XB Development Kit, and how you can get started using a SparkFun board for XB for your next design. And before we get started, don't forget to click that link. There you can find even more information about this topic. Hi, Mark. Thank you so much for joining me. Yes, good morning. And hi, Rob. Thank you for joining me. Oh, it's my pleasure to be here. Thank you. Absolutely. Okay, so I'm excited to talk to both of you today. So first, Mark, let's talk about the DigiXB ecosystem. It's more than just a wireless module, right? You're right. Digi's XB is more than just a wireless module. It's an integrated part of an ecosystem comprising products, tools, and services that empower our customers to expedite their time to market with greater ease. It all starts with our award-winning software and tools such as XCTU and XB Studio that are designed to assist customers in developing, building, deploying, and testing and managing their applications, regardless of deployment location. These tools are crafted to support our family of XB wireless modules and modems, which encompass a variety of protocols and technologies. This supports our customers' greater flexibility in selecting the module and protocol that best suits their specific requirements. Digi's XB modules also offer a streamlined path to expansion into new markets as new opportunities arise. So XB is much more than a module. It's a family of gateways, modules, and management tools to connect, monitor, and manage network devices. I should probably also mention that there's an extensive ecosystem of third-party adapter tools and devices that augment the ecosystem. Okay, so Mark, within the DigiXP ecosystem, what particular aspect will we be focusing on today? Well, today our discussion is primarily focused on the XP3 cellular family of products. These are pre-certified embeddable modems, meaning they carry regulatory certifications such as FCC, ISED, CE-RED, and more. They are also carrier certified for AT&T, Verizon, and they are PTCRB testing is also already complete. This pre-certification greatly reduces the time and risk associated with adding cellular connectivity to an application. The modems are available in a multiple of cellular protocols, including LTE CAT4, CAT1, LTE-M, and MBIoT. And in addition to the cellular connectivity, these modems also offer additional features, such as MicroPython, to allow for onboard edge computing. There's also a Bluetooth BLE radio on board to allow for configuration, and a host of other application options, such as beaconing, connecting sensors, and more. Digi offers a mobile SDK for streamlined application development for phones and tablets. This allows our customers to use their imaginations to create and develop original tools and programs to run in concert with cellular connectivity on board. The modules also have four analog to digital converters and 13 digital inputs and outputs to allow for sensing and actuation. And finally, these modems use the most up-to-date security features available. Transmissions are secured using TLS encrypted data. The modules can only run trusted signed firmware and utilize other Digi TrustFence security features. So, Mark, we should also talk about XB Studio, right? Yes. Well, what XB Studio is, is it's our next generation tool that allows for simplified configuration and testing of XB cellular modems whether they're connected locally or remotely via Digi Remote Manager. With XB Studio, you can configure the radios, perform firmware updates, or even try some built-in demo applications. 
Quick action wizards are also there that make it simple to complete routine tasks such as Bluetooth configuration, restoring defaults, creating a device snapshot, and more. There's also a MicroPython terminal, file system manager, and other tools to streamline and simplify your learning and development. Okay, cool. Now, we've talked about Digi Remote Manager on Chalk Talk before, but this component of the XB ecosystem is crucial to scalability, right? Absolutely. One of the keys to scalability of a cellular-based network is outstanding remote management. With Digi Remote Manager, you'll have the tools to remotely configure one device or thousands of devices easily and securely. A remote manager can monitor your devices, providing real-time health monitoring. It can also be set to alert you or your team should the modem fail to perform to your preset standards. Digi Remote Manager can also periodically scan your devices to ensure they are compliant with an established standard or golden configuration. If a device is found to be non-compliant, Digi Remote Manager can alert you and optionally automatically remediate the device and bring it into compliance. Over-the-air firmware updates are also a key consideration when deploying a network of cellular devices. Sometimes security vulnerabilities are discovered that require a critical software patch or a network operator may require a chipset update to allow a device to continue to operate on their network. Digi Remote Manager has you covered, making it easy to update one or many cellular modems to meet these changing requirements. Digi Remote Manager is also available to stream data from your device to Remote Manager and offers a full API with push monitors to allow for easy integration with third-party platforms and services such as Azure and AWS. And there's so much more. So recently, Digi has partnered with SparkFun to create what we call the XB Sensor Lab. This lab takes the easy-to-use XB cellular radios and pairs them with interface boards and sensors provided from SparkFun. With simple MicroPython drivers running on the XBs, the sensors are read and the data is sent to Digi Remote Manager and stored as data streams. We then created a dashboard that reads those data streams and presents the data with an attractive series of graphical dials, meters, and gauges. This lab includes a variety of quick connector sensors from SparkFun, including temperature and humidity, heart rate, RFID readers, and many more. Some of the applications also demonstrate actuation or control. For example, we have one tool that can read a button with one XB radio. That button push is then transmitted up to the cloud to Digi Remote Manager, at which point a signal is sent to a second XB cellular radio connected to an electrical relay that will turn on a device or a fan or a switch or a light or whatever it might be that you want to actuate. The purpose of this lab is to highlight the simplicity of creating real-world, fully functional, proof-of-concept sensor networks using easily accessible tools from Digi and SparkFun. Fantastic. Okay, so Rob, if my audience wants to get started using this solution, do you guys have a development kit to help them on their way? We do. Thank you, Amelia. And thank you, Mark, for all that information. I know people listening to that might be like, wow, that's an overwhelming amount of information. What am I going to do? Where do I start with this? And the idea here with the SparkFun Digi XB kit is a little similar to most of our other kits, and it aligns with our philosophy here at SparkFun. And that's to make getting started and working with components you want to as fast and easy as possible. So kits like this, like the Digi XB kit, put everything in one place for you. There's nothing worse than being up to your elbows in a project only to realize you've forgotten like one single thing that you need to move forward. And this makes that a non-issue because everything is right there ready for you to get started with. So there's no stop to your creative flow. So to get you started with this kit, the kit includes the SparkFun Digi XB development board, the Digi XB3 low power. There's the SparkFun humidity sensor breakout. That's the SHTC3, which is kind of one of my favorites, especially for quick development like this in prototyping. There's a hologram EUICC SIM card, the LTE wideband flex antenna, uh, 600 megahertz to 6,000 megahertz. There's a Molex flexible GNSS antenna. That's a U.FL. And that's an adhesive antenna, so you can stick that anywhere once you decide where your project is going to live. There's also a PCB antenna. That's U.FL. There's a flexible quick cable for connecting the sensor, like I said, the humidity and temperature sensor here, up to your development board. And there's a USB 3.1 cable A to C, and that's three foot, and that's for you to get everything you needed uploaded onto your little project there. So, Rob, do we have more than one option when it comes to SparkFun boards for XP? 
As a matter of fact, we do. The Spark Fund DigiXP kit comes with our DigiXP development board, but we understand that when you're doing prototyping, that might not be the ideal board for your final solution. And that's why we've got some other development boards outside of the kit. The Spark V DigiXP Explorer Regulated offers a smaller footprint than the development board, and it lacks the USB-C connectors. Uh, you'll power this via its PTH headers up to six volts, but it still has its buck converter for power regulation. Got a quick connector for I2C peripherals, and can be configured and controlled from a central platform through your XP module using Digi's remote manager. There is also the Sparkman Digi XP Explorer USB-C. It's pretty similar to the Explorer regulated, but this dev board includes a single USB-C connector for UART communication with your computer, and of course still offers additional connectivity options through the XP modules. And finally, the Sparkman Digi XP Arduino Shield. And now this board lets you mount your XP directly to your Arduino Uno, SparkFun Redboard, or any other board with a familiar R3 footprint and control it that way. So the development board that this kit comes with has the quick connector. And well, the impetus for quick came out of us as engineers working together. I mean, if you're an engineer, if you're a designer, a tester, or even a hobbyist, anyone working on a project design, then you know that you would much rather spend your time testing and tweaking and creating your masterpiece and not soldering four headers or four wires for every I2C connection. And if you're a project manager, you really don't want to pay your engineers to solder for hours. So the quick connectors allow for just that. They're polarized connectors, and that means you can't get the wiring wrong. I know for me, I certainly remember in the early days, and actually even in the more recent days, thinking, okay, yellow is clock, blue is data, right? Yeah, yellow is clock, blue is data. Every single time I was prototyping any I2C projects, and with most of our quick boards having a pair of connectors, that means you can easily add more I2C components into your project simply by daisy chaining them together. And that is, of course, as long as you have enough power and don't have conflicting I2C addresses. But many of our I2C boards also allow for alternate addresses, either via software or by rewiring their code or via hardware, usually by simply cutting a jumper trace. And for those times when you really, really need multiple I2C devices with the same address, we also have a multiplexer board that can get around that issue. Okay, so Rob, are there any specific components of the SparkFun Digi XB kit that you'd like to highlight? Sure, I think the quick breakout that comes with this kit, this is the SHTC3 humidity sensor. It's actually a humidity and temperature sensor. And it's a great sensor to start with. I think I mentioned earlier, like when I'm testing out a new board, a new wireless protocol, pretty much anything where I just need data, this is one of my go-to sensors. It's really fast and easy to get up and running with the example sketch. We offer libraries and examples for all of our sensors, inputs, outputs, everything. And it just gives fast, simple streams of data. If you just need to know if data is coming in, you connect to this, you run the example from our library, and you're either seeing the humidity in real time or you're not seeing the humidity and temperature in real time. That's how easy it is to figure this one out. Fantastic. Now, you guys have other quick boards as well, right? Absolutely. And sensors aren't our only quick boards. We have uh, I2C connectors on development boards, Pi hats, Arduino shield sensors, displays, inputs, outputs, and of course, in most of our kits. And any of these, or all of these, are great IoT options when paired up with the XP cellular. Bluetooth and Wi-Fi are great options within a limited distance, but being able to up your IoT project range to anywhere that has cellular coverage could be a game changer. So really, any of our I2C options for the most part are going to be compatible with this system. I will say we do not have Python packages created yet for all of our I2C boards or all of our quick boards, but we're working on that. I think we're up to 35, 39, something like that, and constantly working to add more Python packages for all of our sensors. Now, with all the quick sensor options available, I've been thinking a lot lately about potential projects that require more than a local connection. Now, if you've seen any of my videos really over on SparkFun's website or on our YouTube channel, you'll probably know that a lot of my projects tend to lean towards the ridiculous. But I also really love to find meaningful ways that I can combine my tech passion with my passion for nature, the great outdoors, and people. And with the improvements over the past several years in the accuracy of global positioning, we can now measure movement down to the millimeter level. And I found myself starting to look a lot more into tectonic drift how to measure it, and eventually how to use it as potential warning systems against natural disasters like earthquakes and volcanoes. I know a lot of larger cities will have what they call early detection systems, but so many smaller cities, I mean, if you look at a lot of the natural disasters over the past two decades, just hundreds of thousands of people in smaller towns have died because they did not get the word that something had happened. There was an avalanche, there was a tsunami, there was an earthquake. 
And with something like this, something this inexpensive and easy to put together with cellular capability, you could have a small town warning system that immediately sends millimeter movement of the earth, of the ground underneath you, to a central location in the city center, to the local government, and they could easily get that information out and really save thousands of lives. I know that might sound a little dramatic, but that's a possibility with this technology. I love it. Well, I think that's all I have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me, Rob. Oh, absolutely my pleasure. Thank you so much, Amelia, and thank you, Mark. Thank you. And before we go, you didn't forget to click that link, did you? There you can find even more information about this topic. For Chalk Talks, I'm Amelia Dalton from eejournal.com. For more Chalk Talks, head on over to the Chalk Talks section of EE Journal. You can't miss it, it's right across the top. Or head on over to YouTube, youtube.com slash eejournal. <laughs>